I can't find my special bracelet. I think my mother-in-law might have taken it without asking again. Don't be upset. It's a gift from mom. Just try to accept it, my husband said. I often notice that my mother-in-law takes my things without asking, and my husband always supports her. I feel frustrated because he doesn't stand up for me. It's tough for me. Then something terrible happened. Someone stole my husband's favorite fancy car. I know who did it. My name is Emma, and I'm 28 years old. My happy life with my husband, Ethan, started to fall apart about a year after we got married. We both have jobs. But I finish work earlier, so I go home and start making dinner. That day, while waiting for my husband to come home, he surprised me with some big news. Mom's coming to stay with us from next week onwards. Wait, really? She's staying overnight? I couldn't believe it. My husband let out a big sigh. No, she's not just staying overnight. She's moving in. Moving in? Like living with us? I asked, trying to understand. Yeah, exactly. Since Dad passed away, Mom's been on her own. She's getting older, and it's tough for her, my husband explained. Wait a minute. You can't just decide this without talking to me. We have our own lives, too. Can't you give me some time to think about it? I pleaded. But my husband just smiled and shrugged it off. It's okay. Mom wants to feel safe. She just wants to stay with us. I understand she might feel lonely and scared, but you made this big decision without asking me. Couldn't you have at least talked to me about it? Why do I have to tell you everything? She's my mom, he argued back. That's exactly it. She's your mom, not mine. I have to change everything because of this. What are you so upset about anyway? It's decided. Just deal with it. I argued back. Wait, wait. I called out, but my husband ignored me and left the room, leaving me feeling frustrated. How could he decide we're all going to live together without even talking to me about it? I still have to adjust, no matter what. Ethan doesn't help out around the house and acts like it's no big deal because she's his mom. We've tried talking about it, but he just says, it's done, and shuts down the conversation. As expected, the next week his mom, my mother-in-law, showed up at our house like it was planned. If she was a normal person, I wouldn't mind living together. But every time I see her, she says mean things and treats me badly. That's why I avoid going to her house unless I have to. But now, suddenly, we're supposed to live together. As I expected, my mother-in-law started criticizing me from the very first day. Emma, did you know I was coming today? There's trash in the corner, she scolded. I'm sorry, I was working and didn't have time to clean, I explained. Excuses, excuses. Couldn't you have cleaned up after work? But then I wouldn't have time to make dinner. Oh, come on. Stop arguing back. How do you even handle being Ethan's wife? Be more efficient. I, I'm sorry, I stuttered. Just ten minutes in our house, and it's already like this. I'm really worried about what's going to happen next. From that day on, my mother-in-law's controlling behavior got worse, and it stressed me out constantly. Then one day, I came home from work and my mother-in-law greeted me with a big smile, saying, Welcome home. I usually don't get such a warm welcome, so it felt strange. Then I noticed something shiny around her neck. Wait, is that my necklace? It looked just like mine. Feeling uneasy, I hurried to my room and checked my jewelry box. My suspicion was right. I went straight to the living room and confronted my mother-in-law, who was sitting there calmly. That necklace, it's mine, isn't it? I accused. Oh, we finally notice. It looks good on me, doesn't it? She replied shamelessly. What are you talking about? Stop using my things without asking. What's the big deal? It's not like it's going to disappear or anything. But that's not the issue here. Stop complaining and get dinner ready. Ethan will be home soon. Even while I was getting dinner ready, my mother-in-law kept interfering, making me more and more stressed. That night, I couldn't take it anymore and decided to talk to my husband. Hey, Ethan, can we talk? What's on your mind? Today I found your mother wearing my necklace without asking. Oh, so you're saying she went into my room, opened my jewelry box, and basically took it. Isn't that a bit of an exaggeration? How am I exaggerating? Come on, I'm sure mom didn't mean any harm. I felt angry that my husband was taking his mother's side. Trying to stay calm, I continued to explain. So, you're saying it's fine to just go into someone's room without asking and take their things? A normal person would at least apologize. Well, Mom probably just saw something she liked and took it. But that's not the point, Ethan. You need to talk to her. What? Me? 
your mother disrespects me. Telling her off won't do anything, so you, her son, need to do it. Okay, fine, I'll handle it, all right. Despite my insistence, it seemed my husband forgot about it by the next day. I shot him a few angry looks, but he never confronted his mother. Since then, my mother-in-law started using my things without asking, basically borrowing them without permission. No matter how much I complained, she didn't listen. And since there are no locks on the doors in this house, telling her off would be pointless unless she changes her ways. If this keeps happening, I'll end up losing my belongings. I have to stop my mother-in-law's behavior. I need to come up with some sort of plan. Then, one day, something happened that I absolutely couldn't forgive. It's missing. How could this happen? Today, I had plans to meet up with a friend and wanted to wear my late mother's bracelet for the occasion. It's a precious item, so I never keep it in the jewelry box. Instead, it's hidden deep in my desk drawer. And yet, it's gone. The only person who could have taken it is my mother-in-law. When I confront her firmly, she casually admits to taking it. Of that bracelet, I just borrowed it. Then give it back right now. I need it. I can't do that. Why not? Because I sold it. What? You stole it? Is this some kind of joke? Who stole someone else's stuff? Though shaken, I stood my ground. Stop kidding around. Give it back now. I'm not kidding, by the way. Most of the things I've borrowed from you, I sold those too. What? What were you thinking? As I argue with my mother-in-law, my husband Ethan, who had just woken up, joined us. Ethan, listen to this. Quickly, I explained the situation. Your mom sold my bracelet, the one that belonged to my late mom. Plus, she's been selling off most of the things she's borrowed from me without asking. Mom, is this true? Faced with the question, my mother-in-law stuck out her tongue in a teasing way. I'm on a fixed income, you know? I don't want to be a burden, but I can't make ends meet without a little extra cash. You've got to be joking. Who gave you the right? Don't get so upset. I didn't mean any harm. If you meant no harm, you wouldn't be selling and taking other people's things. That's because, but I interrupted her. Where did you sell it? Get it back right now. Just then, my husband yelled, Enough is enough. He wasn't looking at his mom, though. He was glaring at me. Confused, I asked him, Why are you yelling at me, Ethan? Your mom took my bracelet without asking. Be quiet. I did it for mom. Stop complaining. For mom? Seriously. Why should I give up my precious things for her? Because it makes mom happy. She's your mother-in-law. Show some respect. Just do as you're told. I couldn't handle it anymore. Not his mom stealing from me and not Ethan taking her side. I couldn't live like this anymore. Driven by growing anger, I shouted, That's it. If you won't give it back, let's get a divorce. Stop joking about divorce. I'm not joking. I'm serious. Fine. Whatever. I'll get the divorce papers today. Fine. If that's what you want, I'm okay with it. As we argued, I noticed a satisfied look on his mom's face. She never liked me. Her real goal was probably to get rid of me and have this house to herself and her son. That night, my husband came home with divorce papers filled out. After signing them, I started packing. I decided to wait for the right moment to leave. The next day, during my work break, I saw multiple missed calls from my sister Sophia, who lived nearby. Something must have happened. I called her back, and she told me shocking news. Wait, Sophia, is that true? It is, no doubt about it. It's not common around here, but why? I took a photo, so I'll send it. Make sure to check it on your end too, sis. Okay, got it. After hanging up, my sister sent the photo. It was undeniable evidence that could expose my mother-in-law. When I got home and was calmly making dinner, my husband Ethan rushed in, looking worried. Emma, this is serious. What happened? My car, my prize car, is gone. Wow, that's serious. Why aren't you more worried? You know how much that car means to me. I do. It's the car I've been dreaming of since I was single, and I finally bought it last year, remember? Exactly. So be more concerned. We're still paying off the loan for it. Where could it have gone? Please don't tell me. Emma, did you take it? Of course not. I have my own car, and I know you'd be furious if I took yours. But then where? I glanced at my mother-in-law, and she quickly looked away. That confirmed my suspicion. Ethan, I think your mom knows something. What? Why would mom know? 
I asked her directly, and my mother-in-law's face turned pale. What are you talking about, Emma? How is mom involved? Well, I got a call from Sophia today. Sophia, she happened to be out shopping and saw your mom driving your car. What? That car is pretty unique, being a foreign model and blue. It's quite noticeable around here. Sophia even recognized the license plate. Wait, what's happening here, Ethan? Now visibly angry, Ethan confronted his mother. Mother-in-law started making excuses. No, Ethan, I just borrowed the car for a bit. Borrowed? Seriously. I've told you so many times not to touch that car. I'm sorry, but I really wanted to drive it. What on earth did you do with the car then? Did you leave it somewhere? No, not exactly, but I did leave the keys in the ignition. Someone from the neighborhood might have taken it. Stolen? Seriously? I swear I drove the car all the way home. I'm not lying. I showed my mother-in-law a photo to prove my point. Is this why you're lying? Did you wreck the car like this? I showed her a photo from my sister, Sophia. It clearly showed my mother-in-law driving a badly damaged luxury car. My sister sent this just in case. You took Ethan's car and wrecked it so badly that you couldn't drive it back, didn't you? No, that's not what happened. Where's the car anyway? And if someone stole it from the neighborhood, someone would have noticed, right? Well, my husband started shaking next to me, his voice full of anger as he yelled at his mother with a fierce look. Are you serious? You wrecked my car. And then what? Give it back now. Calm down, Ethan. How can I stay calm? You're paying for the repairs, got it. That's impossible. I've already sold the car. Sold it? That's not possible. The car is in my name. I found a dealer who said they'd buy any car. They said I could even sell it on behalf of someone else. So I sold it for $4,000. $4,000? The luxury car my husband bought would easily go for hundreds of thousands, even if sold now. My mother-in-law got tricked by some shady dealer who didn't know the car's value and got ripped off. When my husband found out, he was furious and yelled at his mom like never before. You've got to be kidding me. Do you realize how much that car meant to me? I'm sorry, Ethan. I'll give you back the $4,000, so please forgive me. $4,000 isn't even close to enough. Get out. My husband forcefully kicked his mother out and locked the door. He turned to me defeated and muttered, I never thought mom could cause so much trouble. I'm sorry for not supporting you earlier. Finally, you understand. Don't worry, now that she's gone, I'm over it. Let's move forward happily together. No, we won't. What? Why not? I want a divorce. Instantly, his face turned pale, and he clung to me. Wait a second. I already kicked mom out. Why divorce now? Don't you understand? I'm done with you two. My decision to divorce stands. I don't want to fix things anymore. You've taken your mom's side too many times. It's not fair. You're being too harsh. Harsh? That's rich coming from you. You didn't lift a finger when I needed support. You're so selfish. I hate you just as much as I hate your mother. My feelings won't change, Emma. Calm down. Stop it. This all happened because you chose to live with her. Think about that. I'll never forgive you. What about the car? You got what's coming to you. You deserve it. What? You feel that way? Good. I hope you struggle with double the mortgage and car payments. You deserve the consequences. You'll have to deal with it. You son of a... I left him with those words and grabbed my packed bags. On my way out, I headed straight to City Hall to file for divorce. I deleted all his contact info and cut ties completely. Later, I demanded compensation from my mother-in-law for selling my belongings without my permission. She reluctantly started working. With demands for car payments from her son, she's likely working for the rest of her life. My husband is left with house and car loans, and his life has changed significantly. He no longer goes on stress-relieving drives, spending his days off confined to the house. A hopeless case, both mother and son. Karma's a real thing, serves you right. After all this, I moved to an apartment near my workplace. Now that I'm single again, I have more financial freedom, and life is much more peaceful. Since it's my day off, maybe I'll take a drive to the beach today. This is what freedom feels like. I plan to enjoy my new life to the fullest.